When duct systems penetrate a fire-rated floor or ceiling, a fire stop assembly supports a chimney and retains a fire-resistant rating on the floor or ceiling. First, cut an opening in the floor. The overall opening must be within 2 to 3 inches larger than the outer diameter of the duct. The duct must be at least 1 inch away from the framed opening on all sides. For example, the duct shown here has an outer diameter of 16 inches, so the opening in the floor or ceiling is an 18 to 19 inch square. Once this is confirmed, you can center a section of duct through the floor or ceiling. Create a template of the square opening in the floor and turn the template 45 degrees so that each corner of the template is centered on each side of the opening. Mark the location of the template corners as the location of the floor mounting brackets. You must then install fire plates on the underside of the floor or ceiling. Begin by applying a half-inch continuous bead of STI Triple S Intimescent around the edge of the first fire plate. Make sure the curve of the fire plate is flush against the ductwork and the edges of the plate align with the edges of the opening before pressing the plate onto the floor. Secure the plate to the underside of the floor using the specified fasteners for your floor or ceiling type along the outside edge of the plate. Do not install hardware along the bottom edge of the fire plate. All screws for each floor or ceiling type can be provided by the project contractor or included as an option. Apply a half inch continuous bead of Intimescent around the edge of the second fire plate. Next, apply a generous bead of STI Triple S Intimescent along the two short edges of the first fire plate, as shown. Just like the first fire plate, press the second plate onto the underside of the floor with a one inch overlap so the centering holes in each plate line up. Secure the overlap using quarter 20 by one inch self-drilling sheet metal screws and secure the outside edge using the specified fasteners. Fill all gaps around the duct and the edges of the fire plates using Intimescent. If your floor type contains flutes or openings as shown here, fill them with a 3 quarter inch layer of Intimescent. Otherwise, just ensure the fire plate is sealed all the way around. After installing the fire plate, all joints must be sealed from the top with Intimescent. Be sure to fill all the gaps around the duct and edges. From above the cut opening, completely fill the cavity in the floor with insulation to surround the duct. The insulation can be cut to size or in pieces as long as there are no gaps and is packed tightly. Compress the insulation until it is 3 quarters of an inch below the surface of the opening in the floor or ceiling. Use painter's tape to create a perimeter 1 inch outside the opening in the floor or ceiling, as shown. This step will ensure a clean finish. Using Intimescent, fill the remaining 3 quarter inch gap so that the surface is level with the floor. The Intimescent should overlap onto the floor or ceiling, ensuring that there are no gaps between the edges of the opening or the duct's outer shell. Remove the tape as soon as you're finished applying the Intimescent. Allow the Intimescent to dry enough to create a skim coat. Then wrap one layer of 12 inch wide insulation around the base of the duct and place the half enclosure band around the insulation. Use quarter 20 by 3 quarters of an inch hardware to fasten the tabs of the half enclosure bands together. Next, install the vertical support ring with the connecting tab turned down. Attach four leg mounting brackets with the five hole side turned up as shown evenly spaced around the vertical support ring with the two attached directly above the connecting tabs. Note that all bolts should be facing downward. Using the marks you created earlier, install the brackets using the specified hardware for your floor or ceiling type. You must ensure the bracket hardware is torqued the proper amount. Now it's time to measure the distance to cut the support legs to size. The measurement is made from any floor bracket to its nearest ring-mounted bracket. More specifically, you should measure from the center hole of the floor bracket to the closest top corner of the ring-mounted bracket. You will then use this measurement to mark the spot for one custom hole in each of the support legs, starting from the first factory cut hole. Drill the holes and cut the leg to size. Make sure the legs are deburred after cutting them to prevent injury. Attach all legs to the floor brackets and the ring mounted brackets using 5 16 by 1 inch whiz bolts and nuts. 
Once you've attached all the brackets, you can torque all whiz bolts to 100 inch pounds. The final installation of insulated floor or ceiling fire stop should look like this.